Hey y'all, welcome to the Neighborhood News with Katie and Dana. This is our weekly show where we showcase different neighborhoods across the greater Phoenix area. Find us and previous shows on our YouTube channel. Our handle is at Team Evo AZ. I hope you enjoy the show. Yes. Happy Monday morning, everybody. We are back with another episode of the Neighborhood News where we teach you all about the Valley of the Sun here, one neighborhood at a time. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Sorry we weren't here last week, but we're not here on holidays. And we consider July 3rd a holiday. <laughs> yes, on a Monday, yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's it going, Dates? It's going great. How are you? Doing really good. I'm excited to dive into this neighborhood today. It is in such a cool area. I know. And I know you're going to have a lot to share with our audience today. And we're going, we're going to be in Phoenix right by the Melrose district in a small little area neighborhood called Turney Square. And I, again, I I just love doing research because what I didn't know and what many of you probably don't know either is why 7th Avenue has a curve on it. Do, Do you know? No idea. So this neighborhood sits like literally two streets over. Um, and so Seventh. So nor- our streets in Phoenix are north and south, east and west. Very, it's a, you know, for our major highways have a have a curve. Um, and s- except for Seventh Ave, where all those restaurants in the Melrose district, you know, shop the curve, a lot of them are located. And the reason was because in the 19th century there was a survey, and that survey it didn't meet. So it, yeah. So, uh, so whoops. I know. Whoops. So they have had to correct 7th Ave four times. Wow. Four. And the most recent reason was um because it was such a high traffic area with a ton of accidents. Mm. So in 1947, they finally corrected it and got it right. But that whole curve area has really sparked a lot of just, you know, excitement and development in the area. Yeah. Melrose is really cool. There are a lot of amazing uh, restaurants there. There's really cool nightlife. Um, If you're younger than me, you'd probably really love it there. (laughs) You're my age. What do you think? You'll appreciate the history and you'll be in bed at nine o'clock, but that's okay. (laughs) Oh, you are young at heart, lady. So age is just a number, you guys. So let me show you. It's outlined right here in the square in red. So let me tell you the border. So Turney Avenue to the north, Fifth Avenue to the west, Third Avenue to the east, and Glen Rosa to the south. And you can see that curve. Sorry, I just keep hovering over salads and go. Um, right here, no other street. Very few streets have that, but that was the reason why. And I just so thought that funny. was so interesting to to learn about um, and share with everybody today. Um, so let me go right into our homes, and then we have a lot to share about the neighborhood. Um, so we have um, one home that is our Team Evo's listing that is currently under contract accepting backups, and then we have one that's coming soon. Um, that is listed by um, Deluxe Realty. So I am going to spotlight ours first, Katie. I'm so excited because it it's is the cutest. It is the cutest thing ever. And maybe you can kind of go into a little bit more detail on the property since you're from, a lot more familiar with <laughs> with uh, what's going on here. So I'll absolutely. <laughs> so my clients did a lot of work on this property. I actually sold this home to them. I want to say back in 2018. Um, and so they were really excited to see how much equity gain that they have uh, realized since the time that they purchased. And of course, they put some work into it, too. They were pretty excited about that. So that was a, a big win for them. Um, but you could see it's right there by the Melrose District. I had outlined it on that, that slide before. Yep. You can see the curve and then you can see <laughs> how close the house is to Um, seventh. So it's really, really in close proximity. You can get there really quick and easy, whether you're, you know, biking, skateboarding, walking, whatever you're doing, it's a pretty easy um, commute 
if you even want to call it that. I know it's a walk or bike <laughs> ride. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, strap your roller skates on. You, you'd be there in just a second. Um, but there's a lot of what I love about that area too, is there's a lot of really cool that it's uh, an older area. So there's a lot of really cool buildings and you can kind of see that historic architecture throughout, which I particularly like. So I really like driving through there. The floor plan, it, it's not a huge house, guys. It's just a two bedroom, one bath. And you could see the floor plan here. I just love the 3D image floor plans that we do. I think it just puts such great perspective on, on it for people. Um, but you can see that the main bedroom's just a little bit bigger than that front bedroom there. They have the front bedroom set up as an office. Um, the living space is actually pretty spacious for the size of the home that it is. You'd be surprised. Um, you have your eat-in area, you've got a kitchen island where you could throw up stools, so it makes it really convenient. And then that back room is kind of like a utility room. Um, yeah, you can, so that's being used as a hobby room right now, um, and you could use it as an office. You could make additional living space there, maybe a, another bedroom even. You just need to enclose uh, the, where the washer and dryer is if you put that in a little closet good to go. It would be out of sight and you could definitely make, um, make that room really into anything. I thought about one point in time, you know, if somebody really wants to get busy in there, uh, opening that up and pushing the kitchen and then, yeah, there's lots of things that you can do. No, it's so cute. It's so cute. Built in 1952, all the pipes have been redone. So you no longer have the cast iron pipes there. It's got a two car carport, which is pretty spacious. Underneath that is a double RV gate. So you can get, I mean, if you could fit an RV under that carport, I suppose, or, <laughs> you know, your travel trailer or toys, whatever it is, you, you have access to the backyard right through there. So it's pretty convenient. Backyard is absolutely enormous. Um, I love the grid. They kept the 1950s grid style windows. So they are the vintage windows throughout, which is really cool. I think the only room that doesn't have the vintage window is the bathroom. I love it. Yeah, it's really, really cute. Um, all of that woodwork was already there when they bought it. So somebody came in and really customized this home. Or maybe it was done Gorgeous. when it was built. I don't know. But yeah, it's... <laughs> It's really nice. All that wood is is everywhere. It's throughout. So it adds just, so much character to the home. It sure does. Um, it's had asbestos remediation, so that's all gone. Of course, it's something that we have to think about when we've got a property that was built at that time. Um, all the flooring is all new. It's all LVP. The kitchen is brand new. It's all been freshly painted. Um, the roof has been resealed. It's a foam roof. So mm -hmm. it's been resealed, you know, all, all of that's been redone within the last, I want to say two years. Um, look at how gorgeous the kitchen is. I love the backsplash that goes all the way up. So cool. And I love the disco ball. Well, yeah. I mean, what's a kitchen without <laughs> a disco ball in it? You need to have this. That actually conveys with the sale. That was actually in the contract from the buyer. The buyer was like, um, disco ball, that's coming with. What? You have to keep it. You have to keep it. So excited for the buyer. <laughs> Absolutely. It's got um, quite a bit of cabinet space or mm -hmm. storage space for the size home that it is. It's got gas cooking. I love the floating shelves that they put in there. They are, they actually have storage inside. So you put like your tea sets and, you know, all of that stuff in the floating shelves. Really cute. It's a okay. decent size island. Like I said, this, this, uh, you'd be surprised how much storage there is in this kitchen for a small home. Love it. Love the lighting. There's yeah. a ton of light that comes through those windows too. There really is, but it stays nice and cool in mm -hmm. there also. Um, so that's always good. The AC unit's newer. Um, not brand new, but it's newer. There's the bathroom. So adorbs. See, you even have the woodworking in the bathroom. I know. It's pretty neat. So great office again with those vintage windows and then those are built-in closets and I love it because they've got a nook on top so like they've used it as a bookshelf there um, but you could put you know a variety of things up there for sure whatever you know either for deco or for storage or whatever yeah those books accent that so well though 
It's cute. It's so cute. <laughs> and then this is the room that they're using as their primary. So we've got the larger room mm -hmm. there with the closet as well, again, built in. And the here is that hobby. kind of, yeah, there. so it's being used as a hobby room, but you see what I'm saying? Like you could move those, maybe push the mm -hmm. washer and dryer over just a little bit. I think there's still some space on that side. Um, and then enclose them in a closet and all of a sudden, good to go. You have a very, very flexible space there. Yeah, it's very spacious. Wow. Yeah, it's a huge space. Yeah. Awesome. I'm saying good morning to a couple of our peeps that are live with us. What's up, guys? Good morning, everybody. Thank um, you for yeah, joining. See, so, so there's some space in there mm -hmm. in that back room where you could make it, uh, you know, an enclosed laundry area. For, for sure. sure. For sure. Awesome. And then let's get the backyard. It's that. huge. That is a giant shed back there. And I had thought, you know, you could stand straight up. Well, I can because I have our time standing straight up anywhere, but. Um, I was thinking you could put a mini split on that and could use it as additional office or something. Um, Good idea. It's really big or storage, like what they're using it for, which it's, there's so much storage in there. Which is nice to have. And these trees really create a lot of privacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it's very nice. private back there. They do have um, access to the alley. Mm -hmm. Kind of love it. Yeah, and then the, the seating area, they do have solar panels up there. You'll see solar panels. That's for the hot water heater. Nice. There we go. Love it. Cute little place. It is excited for Multiple the Multiple offers went under contract in like a minute. <laughs> I know, I heard the open house was insane. <laughs> I think 26 groups came through the open house. Oh, well, super excited and um, yeah, very excited for not only the sellers, but the buyer of that home as well. So, um, and like you were saying, there's so much that's close because um, behind me, this picture is a Memorial Hall over at Steel Indian School Park. And this is a 72 acre park. It's huge and it's got a ton of history to it as well. There was uh, the Indian school, which was a boarding school. They closed that down in 1990. There's some really great history on this website on phoenix.gov um, that check out because again, like we were saying, there's just, there's so much history and, and that surrounds this area. Um, so check that out. I mean, the, you can see on the map, you know, how big it is. They've got this circular area here where the Memorial Hall is. You've got basketball courts. Um, playgrounds and all kinds of things that you can enjoy. And that too is, you know, you can strap on your roller skates and, <laughs> and head on over. Um, and then I thought I wanted to share just some of the cool restaurants that are around this area. And if you're not familiar with the Melrose district, you guys check out visitphoenix.com. Put in Melrose District and you'll be able to get a ton of restaurants on here. But I, I am going to spotlight a bunch of them. First one is Cooper Star Coffee. <laughs> I've heard so much about it. I haven't actually been to Copper Star. I haven't either. They do make fresh bagels. And uh, from what I read, they're to die for. So, really? yeah. So there's well, one look right at there. The, how look, look how good they look. <laughs> I know. So great place just to grab breakfast, brunch, sandwiches, salads, coffee. Um, yeah, they won a Best of Phoenix Award. So again, check them out. Um, again, we can share that link. Then Fry Bread House. If you are into like Native American food, this is your place. I'm dying to go because I just want to like, I'm getting hungry just looking at these pictures. Yeah, I'll totally go. I would eat fry bread any minute of the day, any day of the week. So I know, I know. So fry bread, again, I'll, you're, if you live in this neighborhood, you are not going to find very many um, of your chain restaurants or things like that. And that just speaks to my heart after living in for Chicago for so long. Like this stuff is so awesome. There's so much history. And these people, this is their livelihood. And they put so much pride and love into what they do and what they create through their food or their coffee every day, you guys. So fry bread, 
um, frybreadhouseaz.com. Check them out. They're open Monday through Saturday, close on Sunday. And then we also have Valentine. Have you been to Valentine? I have not. It looks like a small menu that they pair wine with. Um, so again, open Wednesday through Sunday, 7 a.m. You can do like a late night, 2 a.m. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not making it till 2 a.m. <laughs> Maybe some of our audience <laughs> needs to go and check it out and tell us how it, how it is at two o'clock in the morning. I yeah. Will be <laughs> way past my bedtime. <laughs> um, and then Clever Koi. And I am all, I love like Thai. Oh, that looks amazing. I know. Um, pho, Japanese, you know, all, all of those um, type of foods just, oh, they just resonate with me. So again, this is not far from there either. You guys check them out. Clever Koi, K-O-I, just like the fish. And then one more I wanted to showcase today, and that is Restaurant Progress. Actually, this is the one they pair the wine with. Sorry. Um, and you can see there, it's a small menu, but again, it looks unbelievably tasty and you can Ooh. pair up your wine. I don't know. So I'm feeling a field trip. If anybody wants to join us, let us know. I'm down. <laughs> oh, oh, one more, one more. It's simply because Katie, this is our jam. Um, Thunderbird Lounge. And you've got, Arcade. <laughs> Looks like a place for the 80s, ladies. <laughs> uh, yes, for those of you who don't know, we are all about the 80s. And this, I saw this today and I saw Miss Pac Man. If anybody wants to challenge me, bring it on. OMG. Uh, <laughs> but this place looks so retro, so fun. <clears throat> Again, Thunderbird Lounge, Phoenix, PHX.com. Check 80s ladies definitely need to road trip to there. <laughs> I know. I feel, I feel like coming on you guys. So anybody wants to join, like I said, you guys just leave us a comment and uh, let us know if you want to hitch a ride with us. Katie and I will take you. Um, let's talk schools really fast. Um, you have Clarendon Elementary for your elementary school. Osborne is your middle school and Central High School is your high school. No HOA in this neighborhood. Um, just because that's not a thing down in historic neighborhoods. <laughs> Typically it's not. Typically no. And we do have one um, biz mom that we would love to share. So Judith Aram and she, sorry, my screen's a little slow. Um, she just opened up her uh, chocolate shop called Midge Gourmet Chocolate. It's located on 23rd in Washington. I'm going to share her Facebook page. She does have an Instagram page as well, you guys, but check out her website and oh. we can indulge in delicious and nutritious spreads. I tried her chocolate on Saturday. Did you really? Mm hmm And sure it was dark chocolate with um, like coconut sprinkles on top and it had some sort of um, pumpkin seed filling. What? Oh, it was amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So amazing. we need to um, assemble this. I love that she has these folks working out. So you're telling me I can, I, I, I look like that and I can eat it. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> a little spread on a, a strawberry or anything like that. So you guys check her out. If you're looking for something delicious, something different. Um, there she is. She's so cute. Thank you, Judith. She's a chocolate enthusiast. So I love it. She started it during the pandemic, which I love. So that's awesome. I met her on Saturday. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was excited to share, you know, again, you know, small businesses are the lifeblood. Yeah, so, no, yeah. it's definitely our thing and definitely something that we're passionate about here uh, at Mom Nation and with Team Evo AZ. I mean, that's something that we support quite a bit um, on both sides of what we do. And yeah, so I was at a surprise a uh, quick surprise birthday party on Saturday and I met her yes. and her chocolates there <laughs> and yeah Sarah did too actually but anyway <laughs> so guys that's Turney Square thank you so much for being with us today if you want to check out any of our past episodes and we've got a lot of them hop on over to our YouTube channel it is at Team Evo AZ. that is our handle if you prefer listening on the audio version you're more of the podcast type 
then you can do a search for Arizona Real Estate Radio on your favorite podcast platform and you will come up to our channel. Now our channel has all of our shows, all of our content, education, all of that stuff pushed through that. So just notif- help yourself, click on the little notify <laughs> bell, whatever it is, um, subscribe, download, like, all review, the <laughs> all, all the stuff. And we'll see you next time. See you next week, guys. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.